Hey, it's Peter Reed Miller from On Sports Photography with Peter Reed Miller. I'm coming you to, to you today from our new facilities at Manhattan Beach Studios. Uh, we have beautiful state-of-the-art video and still production facilities. Mark and Nick have done a bang-up job of making this place rock. Uh, it is the best around. If you're looking for video production in the LA area, please give them a call. We're on the lot with a few other productions you may have heard of, such as the sequel to Avatar, Jane the Virgin, America's Funniest Home Video, and another franchise we can't really mention. So here we are today. We're going to do some critiques. Back at you. Okay, uh, before I get to the critiques, I want to mention that I've just opened registration for two of my workshops this year. Uh, the July workshop, which is the 24th, 25th through 28th, will shoot Oakland A's baseball, San Jose Earthquake soccer, and CrossFit. Uh, this is a great workshop. It's limited in size because we're going to go to the baseball game and shoot from the photo wells. So uh, check my website for a link to register. Also open for registration is Rocky Top 5, my uh, fall workshop in Knoxville, Tennessee. It's going to be September 4th through the 8th. We'll shoot uh, football. We'll shoot UT football. We'll shoot high school football. We'll shoot other events in the Knoxville area, UT sports. We have a great, we start out with a great cruise on the Tennessee River and a big houseboat with a catered barbecue. So uh, that registration is open, too. It's a very popular workshop. Uh, a little more, I can take a few more people, but... Uh, you know, sign up early. All right, critiques. Before I start the critique, I want to thank you all who have submitted and give you a couple guidelines going forward. Uh, going forward, please only attach the images, attach the images to the email. Do not put them in the body of the email, please. Do not send me a link to Google, WeTransfer, uh, PhotoShelter, wherever. Just put the pictures in the email no more than four, keep them small, and if you can, put your name and identifying information in the ITPC area of the image so I can find you even if I've separated the image from your email. Okay, let's start with the first image. What do we got here? Um, got a very striking basketball shot. Uh, what I like right now, first of all, he's got a great background. That yellow background is great. It's almost like... Uh, Geez, you couldn't set up. You couldn't buy a background. And I love the way it bleeds on down to the floor. It's really nice. Contrast against the blue. Uh, it's good action. He's got one foot off the ground. He's got the ball on his hand. No half dribbling. Ball on the hand. Uh, it's all good. It's all good on him. Now, over here on the uh, left side of the frame, it gets a little messy. You got heads cut off. You got guys kind of, uh, kind of conflicted. And I think what I would do with this picture is I think I would crop it like this because that gives you a very clean shot of this guy against a beautiful background. Almost looks like it was set up. Now this was shot at uh, f2.8, probably wide open, at 400 millimeter lens. No, 200 millimeter, so probably 70 to 200. ISO 6400, pretty high up, but still looks good. And at a 1 800th, which is good because that's, that's about as low as I will go for indoor action. Uh, but it's stopped, it's frozen, it's sharp. Uh, it's a very nice picture. Just needed a little bit of a crop. Okay, let's see what we got next. Ah, uh, hockey picture. A uh, hockey picture. Well, you know, right off the bat, um, you know what I'm going to do here. I'm going to crop it because there's a lot of wasted space here. Uh, just You just don't need that space. It just distracts people. So I would crop it a little higher, but you get the idea. Um, it's good action. I don't see a puck. Uh, I wish I did anywhere in the picture. It's uh, a couple guys battling. You get that a lot in hockey. That's kind of what they do. So, um, 
you know, I, I, I think it's a decent action picture uh, with the help of a little cropping, make it a little tighter, make it a little more impactful. Now, again, um, he's at uh, 200 millimeters at uh, F3.2, ISO 2000. Now, hockey's great because you have one giant reflector on the floor kicking up. Very, uh, you get a much better exposure at hockey than, say, basketball. Um, shutter is at a thousandth. Again, it's sharp. It looks good and sharp, so uh, so it's good. It's a good picture. It needs a little crop and really needs a puck in there to be a, a, a real winner, but a, a very competent picture. All righty. Okay, basketball. Um, you know, it, it's a good picture of a guy driving under the basket for a reverse layup. Uh, he's good. Uh, basketball, it's one of the messiest sports to shoot. It really is. There's always going to be an arm or leg or something outside. Uh, I like the fact that we see uh, number 30's face and his arm. Uh, I don't like the fact his other arm's cut off, but it's cut pretty cleanly. When, when you're going to cut body parts, you want to cut where... Well, as we say, where it won't hurt as much. But, you know, here is better than here. Uh, clean cuts. The waist is better than halfway to the knees. So in that sense, I'd say pretty good picture, pretty good action. Uh, not the usual basketball action, which is good because basketball gets really boring really quickly. So, uh, again, pretty, pretty, good, pretty good photo here. Okay, football, pass catch. Uh, I like this picture. Um, the ball's just in his hands. Uh, now, he has his back to us, but what I get instead is I get number 40's face looking up. And I know all these other guys are looking up. And so, in a sense, this is perfect in terms of the ball being everything leading up to that ball that's about to be caught. So, um, I like this picture, and I like, I like the, the layout, I like the shape, and I like what I think really makes it is number 40 looking up at that because there's the only face you really see in this picture, and it works to direct your attention up to where the ball is. So, again, uh, pretty good. This is at uh, 400 millimeter, 640 ISO, F2A to the thousandth. This is very possibly high school bas uh, football. Uh, that's about what you're going to get. You know, we're finally... The question that I got, I still get, but got forever that I couldn't answer was, how do I shoot high school football at night? Well, back in the days of film, there really wasn't any answer. But now, with the better digital cameras, and what is this? This is an EOS 1DX Mark II, so it's pretty much the best going. Uh, he can go up to ISO 6400 without a problem and still have a really nice looking picture. Uh, that's a big change. That's a big change for the better. Okay, what do we got next? Uh, swimming picture, um, well, yeah, it, uh, it could use a crop, but the basic problem is you can't see the face. You can't see the face at all. The face is obscured. Uh, I know, uh, different swimmers have different swimming motions. Sometimes the face comes up, sometimes it doesn't, but this is not really, uh, a workable picture because it's just there's just nothing there and I think even what you'll find which happens a lot in swimming pictures is your autofocus can be fooled into focusing on the water in front of the picture and that's kind of what I think the water is sharper than the goggles uh, something you can do about that uh, at least if you have a Canon camera and I'm sure Nikon has the same options is go to one of the slower responding autofocusing settings. Now in Canon, that's, uh, that's setting two, case two. That will help your camera stick on the subject and not be distracted by stuff coming in front of you. But basically, uh, not really a picture without some kind of a face in there. All righty. Okay, excellent boxing picture. Boy, you guys are sending in some good stuff. Uh, Really nice, uh, you know, boxing is a tremendously difficult sport to shoot. You can, you can be ringside and you can pump away frame after frame and you think you're getting all this and that, but are you really getting that moment of contact, that fist on the face, that glove on the face? Probably not. And here, he didn't. But what he did get, he or she, uh, what they did get was a very nice spray, backlit, 
very, you know, very good looking picture, but it's not the moment. And I think one thing about boxing, along with a couple other sports, tennis, uh, getting the ball on the bat in baseball, it's really a single frame. You can motor along forever, but when you're using your motor drive, you really don't have control of the moment that the image is taken. You're just taking a lot of images all at once, whenever the, as fast as the camera can. But it's not saying, oh, there's the glove on the face. I'll shoot now. So this is something where you might want to try just going with a single frame and just trying to time it out, get a feel for your camera, get a feel for the people you're shooting, and see if you can't just get that moment, bang, right like that, bang, right like that. You don't see a lot of boxing pictures like that. You really don't. This one has some other factors that make it work, but that's what you really need. You really need the glove on the face. All right. Okay. Uh, very nice football picture again. Uh, looks like high school. Looks like in the rain. Um, you know, I I, uh, I like this a lot. I, I'm kind of, uh, what a picture like this leaves me is wondering, what was the next frame? Was he more stretched out? Was he almost vertical to the ground, or did he just kind of leap and go in? Because there might have been another frame that was a little bit a little bit better. But this is a good frame. This is a really good frame. You could open a story with it. You could ask, actually crop it different ways. I love the guy on the ground, the guy 75 and 12. They missed the tackle. That really adds to the picture. So, again, here we go. Uh, F3.2 with a 100-millimeter lens. Uh, probably the zoom ISO 1250 it's a rainy day but again not going too high in the ISO staying wide open on the aperture 1 1250th that's a good starting shutter speed I like to go higher if I can but if not uh, this will do obviously it's sharp uh, good picture really good picture when do we get to the bad ones um, okay hockey jube well you know, it's 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 hockey jew. What are you going to say? Um, these guys, there's too much space between them. And I like that guy in the background too. But oops, sorry. But there there's in terms of a picture that you would run in a newspaper uh, or a magazine. You know, you'd probably end up cropping him alone and maybe with that guy in the background because there's just too much blank space over here between them between he and them. So. It kind of works. It's a moment, <clears throat> but it doesn't work in the fullness of everything that you have. All the elements, they do not come together uh, well enough to, to make that all one picture. But here we are again, eight hundredths of a second, which is good, 70 millimeters, 2500 ISO. Again, you're hockey. You've got that great white reflector right underneath you. So even if the light isn't great, as some of these smaller hockey arenas are, you're going to get something. You're going to get better, better light than you would at equivalent basketball. Ah, uh, better swimming. Now, um, let's see. Did this? Well, it looks like they got pretty sharp on on the face. Um, this was for some reason shot at five six, uh, two fifty, uh, twenty five hundred at ISO eight hundred. Uh, I always shoot my action wide open. Uh, you don't get a lot of extra depth of field with a, a longer lens. Uh, what you get is a diminishment of the background being out of focus. You get a sharper background. What you want is the background to be as far out of focus as possible so that your subject really pops. So I'm not sure unless this was just a 5.6 lens, which is possible, uh, but if you had uh, a way to go to f4 or 2.8, definitely go there. And, uh, you know, take up the slack with the ISO. Uh, you know, it, it's, these are not obviously Olympic level swimmers. Uh, the butterfly is another tough stroke where some people get out of the water completely and some people don't. Michael Phelps comes up like this, but he never does that bird wing kind of thing. Um, this is a little lopsided, but, uh, you know, in terms of a picture of uh, a swimmer, if it's, you know, someone's son or daughter, uh, it's it's a fine picture, but it could be I think improved by shooting a little wider if you could, and um, otherwise it's pretty well cropped. So, okay, just a last thought on uh, these images, which were really very nice today. Um, 
but a couple of things. You really need to make sure that your original image is in focus. Uh, I know there's a lot of wonderful post-processing stuff that'll do a whole lot, that'll improve your image a lot. But, but in terms of, what, when I look at a picture, I judge by the standards of Sports Illustrated. And if Sports Illustrated would not run a picture uh, because it's not sharp, then that's not fixable. Uh, and I think in a couple of cases, we had a little less sharpness than should have been there. Uh, so please try and make sure your picture is sharp to begin with. Uh, let's not over-process. I'm judging these photos for content. Uh, not your, I'm not judging your post-processing uh, abilities. That's all something else. That's, all, that's not what we do at Sports Illustrated or at AP where we can't post-process or really any place serious. You don't want to over sharpen. You want to make sure your image is sharp to begin with. You want to make sure your exposure is good. Do it right in the camera. It's so much easier afterwards. Wow. Well, I guess that's uh, I guess that's what we got today. Um, so that's a little selection of the stuff people put, sent in. Uh, we've got plenty more to work with. Uh, please don't hesitate to send more in. But as I said, please attach the images, JPEGs. Not too big. Attach them to the email. Do not put them in the body of the email. Do not send me a link to uh, Google or WeTransfer or any place else because I'm not going to go there. I need to just take these out of the email, put them in a folder, and be done. That will make it a lot easier for me, and it will allow us to get to more of your pictures. So for today, good work, a lot of good stuff. Thanks for sending it in, and good shooting.